Okay, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find cubic regression in your TI-84 graphing calculator. So let's get started. What we are going to do is we are going to take this information right here and plug our X list into L1 and our Y list into L2. So if we grab our calculator, um, what we are going to do to get to that screen to put L1 and L2 in is hit stat and option one edit. If L1 or L2 happen to be missing on here, um, under stat, the setup editor, it will help you get those back. If you just hit five and then enter again until it says done, it'll bring you back any list that you deleted. And then if you wanna clear it, remember hit the clear button. If you highlight up, hit clear and enter and it'll clear all of the data in there in case you have data in there. So since I don't have any data in there, it's already cleared, I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my data. So negative one, negative, 0.33 and the reason I keep actually typing it in is because if I hit the negative on my calculator um, or on my keyboard it'll put in the minus and the TI in um, 84 does not like that I keep losing track of where I am all right 2.7 and then we're going to just go to the other into L2 and put in our values for L2. So I have negative five, negative 0.11, negative one, negative 4.98. All right, so we have all of our data points entered in. If you need to check them just to make sure that you have them in correct, those are the data points that we put in. Okay, once you have your data in, the first thing that you always wanna do is look at a scatter plot. So to do that, the first thing I'm gonna check is my Y equals to make sure I don't have anything in here, and I don't. Um, if you get an error after you do your plots, it's probably because of something in this menu. So if you just check to make sure there's nothing in there to start with, it just helps you out. So we're gonna go to plot one and turn it on. This one right here is scatter plot, and we put our X coordinates in L1 and our Y coordinates in L2. Once this is set up correctly, we're just gonna hit zoom and stat. Zoom stat will fit the window to fit our data. So if you notice with this, we can see that there's a clear trend. It goes up, comes back down, and then goes back up again. So we definitely wouldn't wanna use a line with this. You could always try a line and see what your correlation coefficient is. If it's strong enough, you could do a line with this, but for this one, I already know that um, the cubic regression is the best model, and we'll just see in a few minutes what it looks like. So what we're going to do to get our, mo to get our model, we're gonna hit stat and calculate, and then we're gonna go to cubic regression, option six. Our X list is L1, our Y list is L2, and if this screen does not come up for you, I will show you in a few minutes what yours should look like. Okay, um, to store the regression equation, and in the calculators where this doesn't come up, your calculator automatically does L1 and L2 as the default, so as long as you used L1 and L2, you can just go directly to this step, the store regression equation step, um, where you hit VARS and Y VARS and option one, and option one again. What this is going to do is it's going to store your equation in Y equals, so you can actually see um, the line of best fit. So I'm gonna click calculate, and on here it gives us the Y equals AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D, which is the standard form of a cubic regression equation. And then it tells you what values to plug in for A, B, C, and D. R squared tells us what percent of our data is explained by this line, so the 0.99968. Um, so basically it's saying that 99.97% of our data is explained by this model. So if this is not showing up for you, there's a couple of ways to get it. If you have a newer calculator, you would just hit mode and make sure that your stat diagnostics are turned on. If you have like a TI-83 that's really old, um, what you would have to do is hit second and zero, and you would have to scroll down until you find diagnostics on. And I just hit the green letter D to get down to my Ds faster. And by default, for some reason, TI-84 has them turned off. So if you didn't have that last screen, that's what you would have to do. And I'm just gonna hit second enter twice. 
um, because this is what I wanted to show you. For those of you that did not have the menu that came up, this is what you would type in L1 comma L2 comma Y1, where L1 is just second in the number one, L2 is just second in the number two, and the comma button is right here above the seven. So if you have an older calculator that the menu didn't come up, this is what you would want to see. Okay, so the reason we stored it in Y1 is because now it plugged this equation into here. And so if we go into our graph screen, we can actually see that this model goes through all of those points. That's why the R squared was so high was because it actually hits all of these points. Um, so the last thing that I wanna do is just write down the equation that we came up with. So Y is approximately 3.1104 x cubed, and I just rounded to four decimal places, just round to whatever it says to round to, um, minus 6.2921 x squared, minus 5.336 x, and it was really six zero, I don't have to write the zero, uh, 0.9737. And if you need the r squared, R squared is approximately 0.9997, so 99.97% of the variability is explained by this model. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or there is additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know.